So on to creating a camera script. Let's build one of them. Uh, a camera. This is going to be scrolling around. Camera scroll script. Okay, on camera movement, it's usually advisable to do all movement in a late update. So let's set that up first. Now, I'm going to be constantly updating the camera transform. So let's store a reference to that component. Transform of type of transform. And then the camera is going to have a target, which is the player. So let's just say camera target. Again, of type transform, because we're going to be accessing the position variable. And also the camera is going to have a move speed. So let's just have the speed there. We'll set it to the same as a player. Check everything's working there. Okay, so in the start, I suppose for the camera. First of all, we'll just store a reference to ourselves because this will always be on the camera. So the camera transform will equal this transform. Now, in case the camera doesn't have a target, we could do the same thing as the level manager here. So I could even copy all that out. You saw me type it in. So, if there is no camera target, the camera target is going to equal Game object find player transform. We're not setting the position here. So we store a reference to our transform. We check if we don't have a target. Make the game object named player the target. Okay, so that's all the variables set up. Now we're going to be comparing where the cat, where the player is in relation to the screen position. Where is the target in relation to the screen space? So let's create a variable. Uh, the, the target screen was of type vector three equals. Um, the camera main. Okay. Camera dot main. I'll probably do that better. But, all right, let's leave it at that. Camera main world to screen point. Okay, I suppose I should show all this in the scripting reference. What's world to screen point doing? Transform a position from world space into screen space. So from wherever that object is in the world, it's going to give us a reference to where that is on the screen. Okay, and then we can read from that where our player is positioned. And then like I said before, if the player is positioned too far to one side, then we'll start moving the camera. So screen point and we are using the camera target transform. Come on IntelliSense. Position. Okay now people could be playing this on different resolutions, different size screens, so we don't want to use fixed values for screen width and screen height. We want to use screen width and screen height and the target screen position as a percentage of those screen widths and heights. So let's just say target screen pos dot x is going to be divided by the screen dot width. Okay, so that'll give a normalized value between zero and one 
as a percentage of the position on the screen. So if he's over here, he's not going to be at 200 pixels. He's going to be at like 0.2%. And the same for Y, which is going to be the screen height. Okay, so we have a normalized value of where our object is visible on the screen. Now we need to calculate our camera move direction. Okay, let's create a variable to store our movement and apply that to the camera transform after we do some calculations. I missed the capital. Back to 3 equals, let's just set it to default of 0. So the camera is not going to move unless these following calculations deem otherwise. So let's start by checking the left limit left hand side of the screen. If okay, if the target screen position dot x is less than 0.2, so he's getting over to less than 20% on the left, then we're gonna say the move direction dot x equals minus one. So if the player the object is over to the left, we want to start moving to the left to keep him on the screen. Okay, so let's now do another one for the right limit. Now we're dealing with the X here, so it's only going to be one or the other, so we can go else if target screen position is greater than 0.8. 80% or 20% in from the right. And if he's over at the right, we wanted to move on the positive right. Okay, so now we need to do the upper and lower. We need to do the Y. So the upper limit. Now, um, screen coordinates start at the bottom and go up. So if we're checking the upper limit, we're checking if the target screen's position, Y, is greater than 0.8, then our move direction y is positive. We want to be going up on the y. And then let's set up our lower limit. Target screen's position y is less than it's less than 0.2. Then we want to come down on the y. So move direction y is now going to be minus one. Okay, and now here we're going to apply speed to movement. Apply speed to the movement. So we can multiply a vector 3 by some floats. So move direction, we're going to multiply move direction by speed. Because we're dealing with transforms here, we do need to multiply by time dot delta time. Okay, so we've calculated a move directional vector to modify our camera's position with. So let's finally move the camera. Okay, so we have the camera transform dot position. We're going to add to that position our move direction. Okay, and yep, found our player. Find our player in reference to the screen. If he's over near one of the borders, we put this right above, below. That should be it for the camera script. So save that out. Select the main camera. Drag on our camera scroll script. We've made changes, so let's save the scene. Now in case we forget anything in the inspector, they should populate themselves as long as the player is named player. So let's hit play. Okay, so looks like the camera did find its way up there. Now I am stuck in the corner here, so we got a little bit of movement when you got close to the top of the screen. Let's just for the testing, let's just move the player out. Okay, so if I move too far to the left of the screen, 
and the camera starts moving left, too far to the right, the camera starts moving right. The same for up, it's too far down, so the camera starts moving now. So there we have the camera movement. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Mm -hmm. Probably set the camera there at the start so we don't have that floating. Was it um, 7.6? Probably push the camera. Where would we want the camera to start? Let's just find some values. Okay, so we can see the player and get a decent view of the playboard when we start. <laughs> the camera was adjusting itself then. So what have we got? Uh, let's say 5.5, 5.58, 7 7.93. 5.58, 7.93. Hopefully we won't get such a drastic jump when the game starts. Okay, that's pretty good. In to move the player out on Z just to test it. Okay, groovy. Now, if you don't like how close to the edge of the screen he's getting before he moves forwards, because he can't actually see a lot in front of him, so we could up that value. Fine, let's expose that as a variable so people can change that to how they want. So all these 0.2s, 0.8s need to change to a calculation based on a variable. Bar, uh, screen buffer. Yeah, I'm terrible at naming names. People that have followed me know this. Float equals. I had 0.2. Let's just say 0.3. I wanted to start scrolling even before gets close. So we can compare that. So this is 0 0.2 now 0 0.3, so that is the screen buffer. Now the greater values will be 1.0 minus the screen buffer. Same here. 1.0 minus the screen buffer and 0 0.2 will be screen buffer. Save that out. Do we have our new variable? I'm on the player. I saw speed and I thought it was a camera. Screen buffer 0.3. Now I have made changes. Oh, I added the script, so let's save the scene. Okay, if I hit play. Okay, there was quite a jump there because of the buffer. Alright, so again, let's pull the player forward a little bit. Now he shouldn't get so close to the edge of the screen before the camera starts moving. Okay, sweet. And we should even be able to test that in real time. Even if I say 0.4, now I start moving. Yep. Now, I have 0.5 will break it, so let's just put 0.49. There we go, and it's yep. So pretty much now he's always going to stay in the center of the screen. 0.5 is close to half of the screen. Okay, so we've set up all the basics, now we need to get implemented some of the functionality of our player.